Right. How are you all doing? Given that it's just gone Christmas, I imagine that at least a few of you may have been lucky enough to get, maybe if you're watching this video, maybe not, an Oculus Quest 2 VR headset. But you might be having some trouble with it. And that trouble, specifically, relates to Air Link or Oculus Link. Now, I've already done a pretty big video on this before, a wee while back, uh, kind of explaining what some issues may be, why they may be happening, and how you might be able to solve them. The look for the thumbnail, um, I think it's a picture of my ugly mug with it's your network settings or something like that in the in the bottom of the of the thumbnail because many things can cause air link and oculus link to not work there was one thing though that i mentioned that i didn't show because i considered it to be a bit of a faff but lots of people have commented on that video and gone this worked that worked or, mate, nothing worked, help me. And for those that have gone, ah, nothing worked, help me, this last one is kind of a, a somewhat last ditch effort to try and help solve whatever issue it is you may be having. But if this doesn't solve it, and you watch the last video, and that doesn't solve it, just wing me a message and I'll, I'll see if I can figure something else that out. I'm going to try and keep this as basic as possible, though. Okay, so first I want to make sure that you've got your Oculus client installed on your computer. And I want you to be sure that you meet the minimum system requirements for Oculus Link and Air Link. Just look them up, Oculus Link requirements or whatever. Just Google them, or Yahoo them, or DuckDuckGo them, whatever it is, do it. If you find that you match the minimum requirements, keep going. Right, now identify how you're going to be connected up. If you're going to be using Oculus Link, traditionally that's just using the USB-C port on the side of your machine. And I want you to just grab your Oculus Link cable, whap that into the side of your computer, and and then into the into the side of the headset if you're going for the wireless link assuming that you've gone through the setup process to to pair it up with the the oculus app do the thing with your wi-fi and and the stuff there that's groovy you've you've done the some of the stuff <laughs> you've done most of the work now the issue so I haven't said what the issue is yet. Usually, that people seem to have is that when they pop on their headsets and they go to activate Oculus Link or Wireless Link, they get the dots of death, where they're basically just kind of hovering in a dark space that just shows like three or four, or I think it's four, three or four, there's some dots, just go dot, 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 and it just keeps doing that over and over, and you never seem to connect to... To, to the, the Oculus desktop thing, the Oculus home screen. That can be caused by network firewall settings, your firewall settings on Windows, if you are using Oculus Air Link, the Wi-Fi one. Shouldn't impact you if you're using wide. If you're using wide and you're still getting the dot, 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 dot things, chances are it's a graphics card issue. Your machine might be a tad too slow as well. I found that depending on how quick your machine is, the dots go away faster or slower. So, you know, hang in there and, and see, if, uh, see if see if something happens. If it doesn't, and you're starting to kind of like, you know, go moldy or, or starve, I think your machine might be a bit, you might be having the graphics card issue. So, the graphics card issue is generally there for folks who have a dual GPU setup. Uh, generally a low power graphics card, like uh, an integrated GPU on uh, a processor, so like an, uh, an Intel Iris something or an Intel 
GMA. I don't even know what Intel cards are. The, 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 the Intel low power graphics card with your quick sync encoder and stuff on it. Um, or you might have an AMD uh, APU in your machine. I do. Uh, with an AMD blah, 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 whatever. It doesn't matter what the actual model is. If you've got a dual GPU setup, Intel, AMD, and then a bigger dedicated graphics card, AMD, NVIDIA, the issue is likely that the server that is doing all the crunching to get the stuffs rendered and sent to here is doing it on the wrong graphics card. So I said in the last video to try and set the priorities for the rendering apps and all these other apps, set them, there's about three or four, five more maybe, where you can tell the app which graphics card to use and you want to use the same graphics card that is going to be playing the games. Because if something is being done on the low power graphics card, it doesn't generally talk very nicely to the big boy graphics card and well, you're going to want it to because it's doing the it's doing the magic jiggery piggery to get the buffer from the card rendered and sent to their headset now i'm going way more technical here than i really wanted to right potential solution to the problem if you have a dual gpu setup as i have just mentioned right i want you to press the windows key and the X key. Just press and hold the Windows key and then tap X and you should have a menu come up. Okay? Now I either want you to click Device Manager on that list or press the M key. You'll notice that M on Device Manager is underlined. That means that if you press the key that's underlined, so in this case M, it will open up the thing that you want. So device manager, press the M key, and then I want you to go down to display adapters in the menu that has just appeared. Right? I want you to go to whichever one of the two, you might have more, I don't know, find the one that is your low power graphics card. Generally, you are going to know which one is the low power graphics card. Now, if it's got a big old list of numbers after it, chances are that's your big boy one, right? I want you to go to the low power one, right? Click it, and then go up to the top. There's an X, and then to the right of that icon, there's disable. I want you to click that, click OK, and then re-enable it. So then just click it and do the thing. Right, now if that worked and you open up the Oculus app and you launch the Oculus Link or Air Link, it should go dot, 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 or dot, 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 whatever, however many dots there are. And then, boom, it should go into the Oculus home screen. Hopefully that worked for you. You don't always have to do that every time you start the machine but i haven't quite figured out the pattern yet but sometimes it asks for you to do it other times it doesn't please 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 make sure that you've got your drivers up to date for both graphics cards so if you've got an intel and an nvidia graphics card update the intel graphics card drivers update the NVIDIA graphics card drivers, if it's an AMD graphics card, update your AMD graphics card drivers, if it's whatever, just whatever combo it is, update your damned drivers, please. Uh, also, if that didn't work first time, open the Oculus app first, then do that, disable the graphics card, re-enable it, it will then close the Oculus app and relaunch it. Hopefully, in theory, the, the, the app, the, the, the app and the encoder should be shunted onto the graphics card that was left available to it and not your low power one. So I think that's kind of a, a more complicated explanation than it needed to be.
but that is generally your last resort unless you want to deal with all the faff that I mentioned in the previous video. Telling apps to run on certain graphics cards um, and all that other stuff. That said, if it's not a requirement that you use the Oculus wireless software, assuming you're going for wireless at least, you can use virtual desktop. And that is an app that you can download. Just search Google for virtual desktop, like virtual desktop quest, right? You can install like a server on your computer. And then you have to buy, I'm sorry, there's no free version. You have to buy virtual desktop on the quest. There is one on Steam. You want the quest version. It's something like 15 bucks. And then basically that will then connect to the virtual desktop server that's running on your computer. Make sure your computer is wired in. Do not use wireless when doing any of these methods. Please, it's not good. <laughs> but we'll connect up and you'll have basically the same thing as Oculus Link. Some games won't work, but for the most part, I've had pretty a pretty solid experience with it. Um, if you find yourself being shunted from the Oculus desktop, so dot, dot, dot comes up on screen, and then the second you move your head, it just tears into blackness and then crashes. Network. Check your network settings, your firewall settings. So let me know if that helps. Because I want more people in VR. I want more people on desktop VR specifically. Don't get me wrong. Quest is great. I've got tons of headsets. Tons of headsets. I've got Vives and Cosmoses and Windows Mixed Reality headsets. But I mean, Quest ones and Oculus Rift CV ones. But this is the one I keep coming back to because it's the best of all the ones I have. It's the most convenient of all the headsets that I have. I have the joys of standalone VR. It's playing on the headset. I have the joys of wired VR, albeit a bit wobbly at times, hooking in a cable. Or I can go full wireless and dance around and not have to do that dodgy cable dance when you spin around a load and either like almost hang yourself or trip over and break everything. This problem is usually something for laptops. I've heard some PC users have it. I don't have any way to test that, but uh, at least on this rig, I can replicate the doobries and, and hopefully uh, help folk out. I'm on a um, Zephyrus G14 2021 model. If you own a newer laptop starting 2022, the 2022 runs, um, Legions, Lenovo, Legion, uh, some of their machines have a MUX switch, which will allow you to completely disable and run uh, the machine on just the big boy GPU. You can disable the iGPU. Windows won't even see the iGPU. It's completely different from doing what I've just done in the in the device manager. Um, and the newest run of Asus laptops have a MUX switch as well. If you are looking to do VR and you don't want to deal with this faff, um, something like that. Look, doing VR off of a laptop, something with a MUX switch will probably be your easiest solution or hope that Oculus fixes the issue in the near future. Any other issues, um, give me a shout. Uh, if you want to find me in VR, I am Skazius, S-K-4-Z-Z-I-0-U-S. You'll see me hanging out in VR chat and other stuff. Um, and dicking around in laser tag in rec room. But yeah, just, just I want to see more people get into PC VR because it's really, really, really good. It's really, really good. I want to see more people stream and I want to see more people doing, you know, full body VR, which is a bit more of a pain with stuff like this, but that's, that's, that's a topic for another video. With that said, I'm off. Please, please, please let me know how you get on and I'll see you all with a bit of luck. Well, in VR or in the next one, eh?